Hey, Brandon here. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in. Jason and I are back with another episode of the Futures NFL Player Stock Report. On this show, we are going to talk about some future dynasty assets whose values are on the rise and who may be on the fall as we approach the 2023 draft. Welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been off air. We've been re living real life, been on vacation, and we're happy to be back. Jason, are you ready to talk about some uh, stock up, stock down players? Oh, Brandon, it's been too long, buddy. I'm very ready. Let's do this. Yeah, we're getting close to the 2023 draft. We're halfway through the college football season, and it's a really good time. I think, you know, everything's kind of getting a little closer um, mm. to kind of getting a little clearer, rather, on, you know, who we think might translate to the NFL. So we're going to talk about some 2023 players in the NFL draft and some even deeper guys. So you guys out there who play Dynasty and Fantasy coming across this show, we're going to be talking about some players that are going to hit next year and probably the year after and maybe even the following year. So let's get right to it. I'm going to start us off. If you watch college football at all, there was one of the best games of college football in a long time, the Tennessee-Alabama game. Tennessee uh, upset Alabama for the first time in 15 15 years. So congratulations to that program. I'm sure all those Tennessee Vol fans down there are happy and rightfully so. And I'm going to talk about Jalen Hyatt, um, a receiver who just completely broke out in this mm. game. He's had a really good season. It's his third year. He is an NFL draft uh, eligible player next year. He is a junior Tennessee wide receiver. He's six foot, 180 pounds, and he put on a show against Bama this past weekend. Six receptions, 207 yards, and five TDs. I actually did a recording of that show, and it is on this YouTube channel, so go feel free to go see that if you want to go see his highlights. But he is definitely a stock up player, and he's doing all of this uh, given a great opportunity with Cedric Tillman, who was their leading receiver coming into the season, who went out with an injury, and he is filling in the void, and he can only be a stock up player. Like I said, he is a 2023 eligible NFL player. Don't know what kind of draft stock he's going to be. He's a late kind of riser with his stats and production. He really didn't do too much in his first two years, but here in his third season opportunity matters he's getting an opportunity and he is showing now he didn't really do a i mean he look he scored five touchdowns 200 yards you got to give the man some credit <laughs> yeah. um, i'm really surprised at how bad the alabama d backs are uh this year for alabama i'm not trying to take anything away from hyatt um but you know the guy has got some speed he's got some ability to create space um, plays 92% of his um, plays from the slot. So if he is going to be a translatable asset to the NFL, he is going to be primarily a slot receiver. I don't see him kind of being an outside guy. So that may limit his production as a future dynasty asset for us. But nonetheless, man, he's, he uh, played really well this past weekend. I think now he hasn't been getting a whole lot of draft buzz, but this kid is putting himself on the map now with this play against Alabama. You score four, five touchdowns against Alabama and put 200 yards on the board. I think NFL scouts are going to notice so um you know did you have a chance to watch that game jason at all yeah i did and you know jill and wyatt he performed at a very high level uh the thing that i, I kind of took away and like you said you don't want to take away from what he did but how he got open the routes that he had it, it, i wanted to see a little bit more manipulation mm -hmm. there were a lot of free releases and we're going to talk about that on the podcast pretty in depth but um yeah i liked what i saw he performed great showed off his speed and you can't take away that he was just the primary playmaker for Tennessee. Yeah, you know, you love a player who, especially in the second half of a big game like that, the whole defense knows he's the guy you need to stop, but yet he mm -hmm. still produces, you know, yeah. so that that you got to put a feather in his cap for that. So you uh, got a stock up player? I do. And uh, maybe you could say it's the entire Michigan backfield with Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards, but I really liked what I saw from Donovan Edwards. He's one of those guys I think that just kind of gets masked in the shadow of Blake Corm, but you know, he's a performer at the same time. He's got, you know, I'm, I'm I can't read his speed, but I do like the fluid nature of how he moves. He's an excellent pass catcher. And to me that provides value at the next level in terms of fantasy. So Donovan Edwards, about 170 some odd yards, two touchdowns. Did have the one fumble, but I really liked what I saw. And he just put on a show alongside Blake Corm against Penn State. Penn State needs to do something to stop the run game because that was just embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, Michigan, I, they, they just got the horses up front, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Both those running backs, and that's that's their bread and butter. They're not much of a passing offense, and they're going to run those two backs. I, I did a, um, a deep dive kind of film review of his 2021 season. Uh, look, he's a definitely a great pass catcher. Uh, one thing that I really thought he needed to better to do better going into the 2022 season is his vision and running in between mm -hmm. the tackles. I didn't get a chance to see that Penn State game. 
Um, but I'm going to there, certainly... there were some pretty big holes, but he did create when needed, and that was nice to see. It's maybe I want to see the momentum from here on out. Does this continue with him? You exactly. Know? And listen, as far as a, a an ascending Debbie asset, a, an ascending future dynasty player, Blake Corm's going to go to the NFL as a junior this year. So that backfield is going to be all his next year. So he could have yeah. a massive, massive workload next year. I like that call. for sure. Yeah. Uh, my second stock up player, I want to talk about a guy from the dead, a guy two years ago, us in who played Devi, who played college football, Julian Fleming, wide receiver from Ohio State, six foot two, 205 pounds. Guy was the number one wide receiver coming out of the 2020 class. And he's been, had, has had nothing but injuries for the first two seasons. So here he is this year, finally healthy, finally coming into his own. JSN is providing an opportunity for Julian Fleming. Obviously, we have Ibuka there. We have Harrison. Those are the two other wide receivers that get all of the attention. But Julian Fleming has 15 catches on the season, 222 yards, and he has a touchdown in every game this season. So he's played four games, and he scored two touchdowns the first week he played. And then he's had a touchdown ever since. So he's putting up some modest, you know, four to five receptions a game. He's contributing. Should be interesting to see. I'm not sure when JSN comes back. But listen, this kid's a five-star prospect. You know he's got skill. You know he's an Ohio State wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And I think any more, the NFL are just looking for talented players. And if he can stay healthy all of this year, I would assume that he would come back for his senior year and try and contribute to put more film out there for NFL scouts if, in fact, he doesn't declare this year. He's a junior, so he certainly could. But he's had very limited production in college for the first three years. And if he continues to play very well this year, I think he's a name that we probably all drafted early on in our Debbie leagues and all of our C2C supplemental drafts at the time and hoping that we had a future NFL um, you know, asset. So let's keep our eye on him. But you know, he's ascending from pretty much doing nothing for two years, riddled with injuries, to staying healthy and being on the field and producing with those other two uh, and three wide receiver, great wide receivers on the team. Yeah, Julian Fleming is one of those cases where I'm going to kind of throw it out there and put us on the spot. We should probably do a film breakdown on him during yeah. the offseason because this can be really interesting to see how he really does perform when we do a deep dive. In the game, it's you know th these receivers are just open all over the place because they just complement yeah. each other so well. So I want to see what he does on his own. I'm anxious to do a little bit more in depth film review on him for sure. I agree. Yeah, uh, my next guy. Um, oh, you know, let me pull up what I got. Sorry. Okay, uh, my next guy, Quentin Johnson. Here we go. We've been mm -hmm. waiting for this. Finally, looks healthy and looks like a dog, man. He's just playing at a really high level, going up and getting the ball, just kind of. Showing off that alpha mentality that we know that he has. We did a breakdown of him during the offseason. And, uh, you know, this is this is what we want to see over the last two weeks. Just being the guy, especially with the size that he has. There's no reason why he shouldn't be performing. And it's really nice to see him and Max Dugan really coming at it and getting that chemistry together. So hopefully this continues. But Johnston is definitely a stock up. Oh yeah, he's definitely broken. I think, like you said, we've been waiting for that. The, you know, everyone was getting a little nervous as a, you know he's a mm -hmm. highly touted I prospect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, coming into this year, a top five back projected to go in the 2023 NFL draft next year, and I think he's mm -hmm. now solidifying that as a first rounder next year. If you've got him on yeah. any kind of C2C or Debbie rosters, congratulations. He's certainly going to get the draft capital and hopefully lands in a good spot where he can be productive as a year one wide receiver. I'm going to go with a tight end. I know people don't like tight ends. People don't care about tight ends, but I always say tight ends need love too. And I'm telling you right now, Dalton Kincaid from Utah is a, uh, he's a dog. He is a stud this week against USC. He had 16 receptions, 234 yards and a touchdown. This guy lined up all over the freaking field through, you know, through the half the season here, he's lined up 35% in line, 30, 57% from the slot and 8% out wide. And in this game, I watched this game. I made a game film of his. It should be posted on this YouTube channel here in the next day or two. If you want to go take a look at all all 16 of his receptions, but this guy just showed out and he's doing all of this with, um, you know, Brent Cuthy, who is the tight end number one, who's more of a, an athletic, a little smaller of a tight end. Mm -hmm. He injured himself. He's been out. And Kincaid in the fourth quarter against the USC game had four receptions in that game and single-handedly continued to move the chains and beat USC. I mean, he was an absolute monster. I love the vertical play that he showed going down the field. He had an amazing body control catch on the sideline with a one foot in. I mean, he's, you know, listen, when we look 
at tight ends, I think the first word that comes to our mind if we're going to get a translatable dynasty asset is going to be, are they athletic? And from what I saw on the field, I think he can go up and get the ball. I think he can make guys miss in the second level. I think he's got the strength and he's got the size. He's six foot 240. It looks a little bigger than that for me, but we've seen guys go to the NFL who maybe not be the best blockers who are that size who are contributing in the NFL. I love myself some Dalton Kincaid, and I'd like them from, from the start. In fact, I did a film breakdown of his 2021 season on this YouTube channel about two months ago where we did an all-22 kind of film breakdown where you could really see his athleticism, his blocking ability. So go check that out on this channel. But love myself some Kincaid. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, you got to the show sheet before me, and I was kind of upset because Dalton Kincaid was going to be one of my stock rises as well. I mean, how can you deny what he did this weekend? And the athleticism is there. You know, I mean, you, I, you kind of you pointed out everything I would be talking about, and I think he's a big time riser in tight end uh, premium leagues for sure. He's one of those guys that you just want to have on your rookie draft board and make sure that you at least get a share of him. I mean, I think the draft capital could possibly be there for him too, based on just how he moves and how athletic he is and the productions coming along too. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think, you know, we had some day two tight ends drafted last year and in, in, in this, this past spring. So, you know, he might not be there, but he's not going to be far behind. No, he won't be far behind. Uh, this is kind of interesting because my my next guy is a guy that I had as a deep dive player like two weeks ago on the podcast, and he's becoming a household name, and that's Nebraska wide receiver Trey Palmer. This kid just went off for 237 yards and two touchdowns against Purdue, and, man, he's showing off just his athleticism, speed, and just his ability to get open. Um, I'm really impressed with what I've seen. He's got the analytic numbers that people will kind of drool over at this point into a season, and uh, he's definitely a big-time riser. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, he's, I think, leading college football in reception and yardage. Um, just, I watched actually, someone made a, a highlight film. I was going to make one of them for this channel, but somebody already did. And so I figured, you know what, it's already out there. He looked pretty good, man. I mean, again, yeah. a guy coming from LSU, he kind of transfers out and here he is now again, opportunity matters and in, in football, you know, different situation. You never know what can happen with these kids, you know? So, right. um, good stuff. All right. So I'm going to talk about a couple stock down players. This First player I want to talk about, Jermaine Burton, was a stock down player. I think I mentioned the first week of the season after maybe two weeks because he wasn't doing anything. And he's still at this point in the season, halfway through college football. He has got to be, you know, a, a, you know, I'm just going to list him here as a stock down player. I mean, his NFL draft buzz is going down. I mean, he's probably been the biggest disappointment following in the footsteps of Jamison William being an Alabama transfer and everyone thinking, okay, there's some uncertainty at Alabama. Nick Saban wants this kid. He wants to bring him in. He wants him to be the focal point. And here he is. He just has not had the production. He's not giving us any of those explosion plays that we're looking for, for a translatable dynasty asset. And, you know, he's paired. I mean, he goes to Alabama with arguably, you know, the best quarterback in college football and still can't produce. You know, he's only has mm -hmm. 18 receptions for 266 yards and three touchdowns. And then he gets himself in a little bit of trouble after losing to the Tennessee game with some people in the crowd. So now you're thinking, is there, are there like character concerns? And that's just adds another kind of negative layer to his NFL draft capital. So I had to include him again here just to mention. And if you've got shares of him in your Debbie League or C2C leagues, um, I think you're probably going to be stuck with a dead asset. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to resurrect. We'll have to see what happened at the Tennessee game. There's a lot of speculation if it's a real video or, or this or that or whatever. But nonetheless, he's not producing on arguably the best offensive team in college football. Um, should be the best college uh, offensive team in the college football. So again, just Jermaine Burton. I think his NFL draft stock is just plumbing. If there's enough hate at Jermaine Burton that I'm just going to – I think you just said everything I – that need to be said. It's just, mm -hmm. it's frustrating. Uh, my next guy is going to be Parker Washington, uh, Penn State wide receiver. You know, when Jahan Dotson was there, I was wondering if Jahan Dotson was helping create what Parker Washington was. And uh, maybe we're seeing that a little bit. I just, it could also be just the offense in general. A lot of that's going through the run game. Uh, Sean Clifford's, you know, he's using his legs a lot more than actually throwing the ball. And it doesn't seem to just be coming on for Parker Washington. I think the talent is there, just the opportunity that he's, having this season just isn't providing what we need to see in his development. But um, 
no matter how you look at it, this is definitely not the season we thought we would have from a guy who has really the primary role in that offense at receiver. And for me, Parker Washington definitely just stuck down. It's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, you know what? I, I I watched a little bit of that game, and and it's just the Penn State offense is just putrid all the way around. Yeah, you know, so you, yeah, you have to just wonder thing. if he was in a different opportunity and a different, you know, an explosive offense like a wide open offense where he had maybe another good receiver, maybe not taking coverage off. We might see a different player. So it's going to be a tough eval, right? I mean, right? I, yeah, you exactly. Know, we get into the off season, we're going to have to just really look at his skill set on the field and make a decision: is it to the you know the situation that he's in, or is he just not as good as maybe? Maybe we were hoping and thought that he would be. Um, I'm going to go with my second stock down player. And this is a player that I freaking love. And the only reason I just wanted to put him in my stock down is because I wanted the opportunity to talk to you about him. And his name is Chris Marshall, Texas wide receiver. Now he's an incoming freshman. All the players that we've spoken about on this show today have all are going to be 2023 eligible draft players, I think. Um, but Mr. Marshall is not going to be available to our dynasty rosters for 2025. He's an incoming freshman. And I really, really like Chris Marshall as a prospect. He's a five-star freshman who came into Texas A&M in one of the best recruiting classes of Texas A&M's history. He comes to Texas A&M with two good tight ends as well as Evan Stewart, another high-touted wide receiver. And I think he's being overshadowed by Evan Stewart. Now, I watched his game against Alabama two weeks ago. I made a recording of Chris Marshall. He had three receptions in that game um, for 40 yards, um, but I really liked what I saw. He's got really good size at six foot three, two. 105 pounds, but I think that he is a really, really good wide receiver. And I would be, I'm bringing him up on this show. If you're watching this from a Debbie standpoint is to go out and make some offers for Chris Marshall. Now, when I watch that game from Alabama, Haynes King just basically threw the ball to Evan Stewart, even if he was open and even if he wasn't right. So mm -hmm. I just feel as though he's just locked in on Evan Stewart, but Chris Marshall is a player and I think he's undervalued right now and his stock is down because no one's talking about him. Everyone's excited about these rookies that are showing first year production. And I understand that, but sometimes some of these kids find themselves in situations just like we were talking about Parker Washington that provide opportunities to, you know, We've seen late breakouts all the time in college football, late breakouts in their junior year, just like we were talking about Jalen Hyatt, who, you know, Hyatt, who might get day three draft capital. Chris Marshall's another one of these kids who's flying under the radar. And if you're looking for a good person to trade for here mid season, I would suggest go out over and getting Chris Marshall. I think he's just as good as Evan Stewart in a different way, but I really, really like Chris Marshall. Yeah, I think that's a good call, and I like the fact that you said they're kind of the same in a different way. I mean, they do play differently, but they're both immensely talented and can definitely help their quarterback out. I just don't think the quarterback play has really been that great, and I'm very concerned of how Texas A&M's development of the receiver has been over the last few years since, like, Mike Evans. So I that's another thing that kind of puts a little flag on that, but I don't think you're wrong. Chris Evans or Chris Marshall's definitely – a uh, big time athlete and you know has the size that you want at that stage in his career so trading for him now is a great idea because he could pop off at any point and i'm really hoping that he's one of these players that after the year decides to transfer and go to an lsu or go to another program that can showcase his skills so yeah, who's your uh, other you. stock stock down player yeah, and this is a guy that we talked about, you know, before the season started. And, you know, you did a film breakdown on him um, and showed one of his games. And Lorenzo Styles at Notre Dame, this could also be an environmental thing because Notre Dame just, just that offense is mm -hmm. just not clicking. Drew Pine doesn't look right. Um, they lost Tyler Buckner. So it could be that. But at the same time, Lorenzo Styles was never a guy I thought had any special qualities, just solid all around. And for a guy who's solid all around, who's not developing and not producing, that's a big problem. So for me, Lorenzo Styles, I just can't get on board with it. Yeah, I think he was one of those players in the Debbie community, especially on Twitter, that was really kind of propped up. I think a couple people liked him and mm -hmm. it kind of swelled into this early round drafting. But I made a film on this YouTube channel of all of his 21 receptions. And I have to agree with you. I didn't see anything that was super exceptional that was like, wow, yeah. you know, those wow moments that we look for. It looked like a good receiver, but nothing that would catapult him into. I think a lot of people had him in their top 15 wide receivers coming into the into the season overall from Debbie and which I kind of really never understood but I, I like that had call. to do with the opportunity that was available yeah and I agree that I agree and that was probably it yeah
that's it. So, all right, there you guys have it. There are 10 players on this uh, NFL futures uh, stock report. Hope you enjoyed the show. Again, leave a comment. Love to hear your thoughts on these players. If there's some other players that you think are stock up or stock down heading into the draft soon, let us know. So, Jason, always a pleasure, my friend. You too, brother. See you.